Good evening, everybody, and welcome to day three of the Mindset, Habits and Motivation Workshop with me, Jay Cordry, as part of my Shifting Perspective initiative. So without further ado, let's get started. So this week, we have looked at the introduction and our paradigms, what a paradigm is and how much influence and control it has over our life. We looked yesterday at mindset and how mindset is the key to everything that you do. Today, we're going to look at habits. And as I said um, on day one, habits control or habits are controlled by our subconscious paradigms. And 95% of our habitual behavior the behavior that we do automatically without thinking controlled by our paradigm is habitual. So being able to switch those habits around and upgrade them is really, really vital if we want to change our results. And that's what today's subject is all about. So today I am going to go over the planetuding approach, um, delve into the book Atomic Habits, where most of this information on today's slides have come from. Um, we're going to talk about non-productive actions and how to turn them into productive actions, how to change habits, and then have a quick look at decision and discipline before we go over our homework and then have some Q&A time. So thank you for joining me this evening whether you're here live or whether you are watching the recording. I am super grateful for your attention and your trust in me to share this information with you. So let's get started. So planetuding, what? This is um, an approach that I have created that is the amalgamation of planning, gratitude, and intentions, okay? So on planning, it helps you to, so it helps you to basically plan out your week or your next day, doing a day at a time. Um, your gratitude, it helps you to encourage, it helps you to, it encourages you to be grateful and to really think about what you're grateful for, whether you have it now or whether you'll have it in the future. And also your intentions. So if you start each day with a specific intention, you are more likely to get the things done that you need to get done. And the Planet Shooting Journal is a printable book. It is also available in a free electronic copy, which I'm more than happy to send out. I will include it um, on the email that I send out to everyone who is registered for this call. It's um, over 100 pages, all nicely printed. Um, and it starts off with um, some information about where it comes from. A um, little bit more information, then a how to use this journal page, some extra tips to boost your success, which a few of them we are going to cover in today and tomorrow, some session, um, it gives you spaces to write, okay, focusing on goals and places to write, um, it's got quite a lot of information about habits and habit settings, which is what we are going to talk about today. Um, and these are the worksheets that I'm going to set you for your homework this evening. Um, so yeah, and then it is literally just a hundred journal pages where you can write what you're grateful for today, um, what you want to get done tomorrow, and then space to prioritize it. Um, what is your intention for tomorrow? And then space to write out your goal, which again, we're going to go into goal setting tomorrow. Um, as part of this journal, you also get a free little gift at the back where you can cut out a little bookmark but yeah like I said you can have or you will have because I will email it out this evening a free electronic copy of that journal um, it is available in A4 and A5 I'm going to send out the A4 version because it's easier to print for you um, but if you do want the A5 then please just let me know um, or if you go onto my website rethinkyourperspective.com under the programs section you will find um, printable versions where I can get them printed and directly mailed to you but enough of that so <laughs> planetuding is a new daily habit to shift your approach and replace your paradigm. So it's a new habit that replaces old unproductive habits, which is our topic today. So atomic habits. And now I'm not muted. Um, little blip there. Um, give me two seconds to get, no, not that one. 
to get the screen share going again. Just had a very strange blip in the internet for some reason. Um, but I will stitch this together for the recording for these two. Hopefully it has recorded the first one. But hey, we'll find out at the end. As I was saying, this book, Atomic Habits by James Clear, absolutely amazing book. Um, groundbreaking. On the back it says, a revolutionary, definitely, way to get 1% better every day. Okay, highly recommend you get this book. It is the absolute Bible, the gospel, the best book I've read on changing your habits. And most, like I said, most of the content that is in this um, presentation, I have borrowed from this book and it is all James Clear's. Okay, all his, all gratitude to him. And you can show gratitude by getting the book. <laughs> okay, so non-productive actions to productive ones. I'm just going to move my face out of the way. There we go. So a non-productive act, um, action is anything that you do that does not get you to your goal. So for me, it always used to be getting up late, having lions, you lose a couple of hours of productive time um, in the morning, um, going to bed late. So then I'm really tired all day as well. Um, it could be um, binge watching Netflix or Disney Plus, which is my favorite. <laughs> Um, or sitting scrolling on your phone, or just basic procrastination. Um, anything that really is not being productive, that is not helping you to get to your goal, is a non-productive action. Um, and once you start to notice your non-productive actions, you'll be able to think of things that you can replace them with. So with the example of um, scrolling on your phone, I set myself the challenge of when I notice to count down in my head, five, four, three, two, one, turn it off. And then I would go and get on with a 10 minute task, be that fold the washing, empty the dishwasher, uh, make the bed, um, anything, anything that can be productive. Okay. Um, and then you set that as an intention every single time. We'll go into intention habits shortly. Um, but you can't just stop doing a non-productive action, same as you can't just stop doing a bad habit. You have to replace it with a productive or a good habit. Because if you just stop doing it, your paradigm's like, well, what am I supposed to do? And it will look around for absolutely anything to replace it with. I don't know if any of you um, have ever been smokers, um, but my mum was, um, and a few of my friends were, and they just decided one day, a few of them in different different times, to just go cold turkey. And within a couple of days, you could tell they were getting really, really angsty, really upset, really miserable. And um, a couple of them turned to drinking more. Um, a couple of them turned to Haribo. A couple of them turned to um, chewing on pens and pretending the pen was a cigarette because they just needed something to do with their hand. And of course, with biros, they ended up with quite a few uh, ink stains on the side of their mouth. But because they didn't replace the smoking with a productive habit, the paradigm's like, I need something to do. Need something to replace it. Okay, and that's what we are going to cover this evening. So um, within the Planetuding Journal, I will send this, this, um, it's not a worksheet, this, sheet thing <laughs> is part of your homework this evening um so we'll go through it a bit more detail at the end but it basically gives you space to write down your unproductive habits and then write an alternative so unproductive habit could be um scrolling social media new productive habit could be when i notice i will count down from five and then go and do something for 10 minutes to reset, okay? And that then leads into the second sheet, which is your second part of your homework this evening, um, which is the habit that you're working on in a lot more detail, all right? But we'll go through that at, towards the end. So how to change habits. A habit, I thought a definition would be good first, is a settled or regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. And as I've said, it's controlled by your subconscious, okay? So it's controlled in the subconscious mind. 
you don't have any control over your habits you'll do it automatically um one of my bad ones is i pick um down the sides of my fingers um which can be quite painful but it's a habit when i notice i'm doing it i stop and if i've got hand cream nearby i will go and put some hand cream on um or i'm trying to get into the habit of putting hand cream on morning and night so there aren't any rough bits that I can get my other fingernails in I also keep my nails quite short so that it's less attractive to try not attractive less what's the word it's sort of like I suppose attractive can do um it's I, I don't want to do it as much because I haven't got anything to pick with OK, so it's just about um, your habits, which are in your subconscious mind. They're controlled by your paradigm. They're completely unconscious. You do them automatically. OK, they are controlled by your paradigm. And I put it in a little heart shape there because the ancient Greeks considered the heart to be your subconscious mind. OK, so that's where the saying was thinking with your head, feeling with your heart. OK, so. Within Atomic Habits, he has a couple of activities which come with um, the extra little book that you can download once you have bought the book. Um, and within it, it starts off by giving you a, a few things to think about, such as this one, which also ties into Monday night's homework of who is it that you want to be? What habits are you trying to change? Or what person are you trying to be that needs some habit change. So if I'm the type of person who is confident, and it's always written in present tense, not I will be the person who is confident. I am the type of person who is confident. The habit I'll be focusing on is um, speaking to people rather than hanging around at the back of the room. Or I'm the type of person who goes to bed early so I can get up early. The habit I'll be focusing on is going to bed early, <laughs> okay, so that you can get up early. So it could be I'm the type of person who gets up early in the morning and does my daily study. So the habit I'll be focusing on is going to bed earlier, going to bed earlier, get up earlier, feel just as awake, which is what I do at the moment. So I have an alarm set on my phone for 10 o'clock, which is the <clears throat> time for bed now and there is a second one that goes off court past uh, just in case I'm a bit engrossed or oh just one more thing one more thing and that means that as long as I'm asleep by 11 which I usually am it's usually about quarter to 11 I fall asleep I am awake naturally at 20 past five before my alarm goes off which is the best way to wake up okay so this is the first thing that James Clear kind of goes through, not the first thing in the book, but the first kind of activity, you need to work out who you want to be in order to focus on the habits that you want to change. So I'm the type of person who is a successful entrepreneur. A habit that you'll be focusing on could be I'm the, the, the habit I'll be focusing on is getting up earlier or doing more research or not watching Netflix but you have to replace Netflix with something else. So it could be the habit I'll be focusing on is um, studying in the evening instead of watching Netflix. Okay. And this is supported by an implementation habit is one type of habit that he suggests. So you set a behavior at a certain time in a certain location. So if you, let's use a different example. If you are, one, I'm the type of person who is fit and healthy and goes for a run every day. The habit I'll be chain or the habit I'll be working on, um, the hope habit I'll be focusing on is going for a run every morning. Okay, or I'm the type of person who is um, fit and healthy. The habit I'll be focusing on is going for a run in the morning as part of your fitness routine. So you say I will behavior go for a run at say six o'clock in my local area okay or i will um eat a healthy breakfast at my kitchen table or at seven o'clock in my kitchen okay it's a behavior a time and a location 
and it's called an implementation habit. And I did write a blog post about this the other day, which I will include in the email that I send as a follow up to this lesson. And if you do want those details, um, please just reach out to me if you're watching the replay and I'll be more than happy to forward them on. Next one then, a temptation habit. So these are based around things that you really, really enjoy doing. But while they might not be the most productive, they are the things that you like. So for me, it could be drawing or reading a book or doing some sewing. I like to make things. I made my jumper. <laughs> um, so I will only sew when I have done what I need to get done. So for me, really of an evening, it could be I will only go on the sewing machine when I have set up my content for the next day or reply to some emails or watched a piece of training or delivered one of these amazing sessions that I absolutely love doing at the moment. OK, so it could be I will only watch Netflix when I have been for a run. Um, I will only have um, my favorite breakfast, which could be, I don't know, waffles with um, jam and cream, say, when I have done half an hour of exercise. OK, so you dangle the carrot in front of yourself. We're basically big children. We can be bribed and you can bribe yourself. It's very easy to do. You literally put the thing that you want and you give yourself the command, which is why we're going to talk about decisions and discipline towards the end of this session. You are not having it until you have done the thing that you need to do. And it could be that the thing that you need to do, the habit you need to do, you really don't want to do it. OK, I know when I was first started out doing um, my yoga in the morning, I there were a few mornings where I just didn't want to. I really didn't want to. So I set myself the temptation habit of I will only. Um, what was it I did? It was something so strange. So something so small. I will only. um eat my breakfast when I have done my yoga because I'm always really hungry first thing in the morning because I don't eat after eight o'clock because it just mucks up my sleep so I don't eat after eight o'clock so eight till five is quite a long time for me <laughs> for someone who eats little and often that's quite a long time which is why I don't ever fast during the day because I fast at night I don't need to fast during the day um so I set myself the food temptation i will only have my breakfast when i've done my yoga and within two or three days i wanted to do the yoga every day it was awesome so temptation habits um are basically you are bribing yourself and it's very effective so another thing that james clear covers in his book is to use a habit tracker so you set up a little chart this one is like um the days of the month, for example, or it can literally be as simple as what's included in the journal, um, which is just a page of, see if it comes in, a page of squares, okay? And for every single day that you do it, you color it in or you tick it off or whichever. Um, I use my journal, my diary, um, so my planner, um, and I put a little dot or a cross um, under each day to keep a track of days when I've done it. And it's really, really cool because if you build up a nice little streak, it gets harder and harder to break it because you're like, no, 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 I've got this far. Like on Duolingo, for example, I do the Duolingo um, language learning app. Um, and on there, um, I'm up to 157 days. After about day 10, I could not even think of missing a day. I've never used one of the streak freezes or anything like that. I'm very proud of this. Um, but then that's like an OCD thing that kicks in. So it's a it's almost like holding you to account because you feel bad if you skip a day because it shows you on the tracker. So it's very, very effective. OK, so. The other thing that James Clear goes into in his book, sorry, I had a complete um, is to notice when you're doing your bad habit and to also use this as a way of creating your new habit. So he says that there are four stages to any habit. You have the cue, which is the trigger. 
So if it is, um, I don't know, unhealthy eating, for example, so you're quite addicted to biscuits or chocolate, we all are, I know I am. <laughs> um, the cue could be, or the trigger could be just seeing the biscuit barrel or seeing the block of chocolate that's in the fridge. Okay, so that's the cue. You see it. Could be as simple as that. Or you smell something, or you hear something, or you go to a certain place. And that sets up a craving. Your brain or your mind goes, your paradigm goes, ooh, that's the trigger. I know that I'm going to get this treat. Okay, and it instantly starts thinking about the reward. And the response it starts to make you really, really want it. So if it's food-based, I've been talking about chocolate, now I'm salivating. <laughs> so you have your trigger, your mind craves it, you then go and get it and you eat the chocolate or you eat the biscuit and then you get the reward. You get the dopamine hit or the happy chemical hit, okay? And then it starts again. So when you're trying to change your habit, you need to swap out the response and the craving when you get the cue. So, for example, if you're trying to build the habit of going for a run in the morning, you could set up your running gear the night before. And so when you get up in the morning, you will see your running gear and go, ah, I'm going for a run. And then you'll crave going for a run. And after a while, you won't be able to not go for a run. So for me, the way I did this with my yoga practice in the morning, which I put the reel up about a couple of days ago, or today, today or yesterday, someday this week, um, I laid out the, the yoga mat the night before. So when I get up in the morning, the first thing I see is the yoga mat. And I'm like, aha, uh -huh, yes. And then I crave to get on the mat because I like the feeling afterwards. So I see the yoga mat. I want to get on the yoga mat. I get on the yoga mat and I do my yoga. And my reward is that I feel healthy and happy and chilled and calm and awake rather than stiff. Okay. So James Clear also goes into and using this um, four step thing. He, he mentions that habits need to be obvious, which is the cue. So if you are trying to change a habit, you need to make it obvious. So putting the running stuff out in the morning is obvious because it's there. That also makes it convenient because you literally roll out of bed and you get straight into your running kit. You don't have to go and find that way good sock. You don't have to go and find the top that you want to go for a run in. It's all there. This makes it easy to do the habit. There's no resistance. And then it's even more rewarding. OK, so your habit needs to be rewarding as well. So if you're trying to stop doing something that you really enjoy, you need to replace it with something that is equally rewarding. So with my yoga, for example, the reward was that I feel great. I feel um, loose and limber and healthy and I'm losing some weight. I'm putting on muscle. It's all benefit, which does take time with exercise but you need to break it down so that it is nice and obvious and convenient and easy, okay? And the more obvious and convenient and easy it is to do, the more naturally you'll do it. And the quicker it will become an automatic habit to the point where you would feel lost if you didn't do it. So now for me, if I don't do my yoga in the morning, I feel a bit, mm, I don't feel right. Even if I literally only have five minutes because it's a weekend or something or um, we're, I've got to be out early or whatever, I will still fit in at five minutes. Any amount of time is enough. OK, so all new habits need to be obvious, convenient, easy and rewarding in order for you to want to do them to replace the old one. Does that make sense so far? I'm just going to check the chat for any questions. No, all good. Got some thumbs up. Thank you. Awesome. So next little bit is a quote from Bob Proctor. Focusing on the benefits that we gain from forming new habits always provides the motivation that's necessary. So focusing on the benefits that we gain from forming new habits always provides the motivation that's necessary. 
So the benefit that I gain from doing my yoga is how good I feel and the weight that I'm losing and the muscle that I'm building. That provides my motivation to get out of bed and do it every day. Okay. Um, the benefit that you gain from not eating the biscuit barrel um, will mean that, that you start to lose weight and you feel a bit healthier in yourself because you're not eating low frequency foods as we discussed yesterday. Okay. So you've got to find the benefit and focus on that to give you the motivation to change the habit. And it could be that the benefit is reaching your goal. And obviously goals and motivation is our topic for tomorrow. So I won't dwell too much on it this evening. So next up, decision and discipline. I have put this in because to change any habit, you need to make a decision to do it. And then you need to be disciplined. You have to hold yourself to account. Okay, so a lovely quote from Tony Robbins. Stay committed to your decisions, but stay flexible in your approach. So you can always make a new decision, but you never go back on one that has already been made. The destination, the goal, the end point of the decision remains the same, but the route there changes. So it could be that you set, you make the decision that you're going to exercise every single day. But one morning you wake up and it is absolutely torrential outside to the point where you're even going to you are going to be a drowned rat within two seconds of stepping out the door or you have an early morning meeting and you are unable to do your run first thing in the morning you would then reschedule for later in the day you don't miss a day you would just do it later and you set a new decision for that day that okay i can't do my run this morning i'm going to do it at um just before tea tonight or after tea or whenever is good for you to run in the evening or go for a run at lunchtime or change it up and do a different form of exercise instead um, do a static um, body weight um, cardio workout strength workout in the front room instead of going for a run as long as you replace the thing that you were going to do with something as equally good and rewarding you've still made the decision that you're going to exercise every day you're still holding yourself to account and you're still doing it you're still following your own command but you've been flexible in your approach to get around an obstacle, okay? For me, when I was going running um, a few years ago, I don't overly run so much anymore due to an Achilles problem. When I first hit my Achilles problem, um, luckily for me, I didn't, well, unluckily I didn't rupture it. I've only got tendonitis, um, so it's just not healing as fast as it should. So I know that I can't run too far or too fast. I still do run on occasion, but I can't do it as regularly as I'd like to. So when I hit that during my fitness journey, I didn't let it stop me from reaching the decision, sort of make like continuing on with the decision to exercise every day. I just swapped to something else and I did a um, home based um, exercise instead. So if you um, come across a little niggle, like a knee starts playing up or a hip or you sleep funny and you just it just feels too much, too painful. You're going to cause more damage to go for a run. Do something else instead. You're still following through your decision. You're still going to reach your goal of doing your exercise every single day. Okay. And the only prerequisite to making a decision to do something is that you want it. You want to do that thing. So you make the decision to do it. You give yourself a command and you follow it. So you must know what you want. OK, which is the questions that I asked on Monday for you to do for your homework, which will need to be done by tomorrow. Hint, hint. OK, so that we can go through them in the session tomorrow. And I would love some interaction tomorrow from you guys to really put this stuff into motion. OK, so always make a decision on where based on where you are now, not where you think you're going to be or some information that you don't have. You can only make a decision with the information you have right now. OK, so do not try and go, well, I'll make a decision if this happens. No, make a decision now. If something happens and you get some more information, you can always change a decision later. But the destination stays the same. All right. So. Use your intuition to help with your decisions as well, if you're not sure. OK, 
Um, and yeah, the most successful people make decisions quickly and then rarely, if ever, go back on them. They will make a new decision, but they will never go back on a decision that they've already made. Makes sense. Good stuff. Okay, so that was our day three content. Um, we've looked at planituding approach, which like I said, I will drop over in an email after this session. We have looked at atomic habits and I've introduced this because I do not want to plagiarize or claim any of this because it's brilliant. And the guy is an absolute genius. Um, we have looked at non-productive actions and ways to change them into productive actions and then how to change habits. OK, so loads and loads of content, really, in this session. But like I said, you'll get the recording. Um, so feel free to watch it as many times as you want. I'm also going to cut it into little snippets as well to put out um, as little shorts and things here and there to help just little ideas. We've then also covered decision and dis the discipline to follow through. So homework. As I mentioned before, it is these two sheets, which are both out of the planetuding approach. Um, so the idea is, is that on the first one, the little one at the back, my habits, you write down your list of habits that are not serving where you want to be or where you want to go. Excuse me for one sec. OK, um, then you think of alternatives that you could do instead. So old unproductive habit could be going to bed late. New productive habit is going to bed early. See what I did there? OK, and then the second sheet, the habit I am working on sheet, you choose one of the unproductive habits that you want to change because you can only focus on one, maybe two habits at a time. Trying to change everything all in one go is just going to cause overwhelm. So it's not going to happen. OK, so choose one of your old unproductive habits and then write it on the top line. Then write the new habit underneath. OK, and both of them in as much detail as you can. And then you put in your implementation or your temptation habit or just your noticing. So your cue. Um, when I notice that I am doing the unproductive old habit, I will do a new productive habit instead so when i notice that i am scrolling through social media i get that little voice in my head that goes this isn't very productive you should be doing something else yeah, yeah one more minute you should be doing something else oh just one more so when i notice i am scrolling through social media unproductively i will do a five a countdown from five and then go and do a 10 minute task instead and then there's a little phrase there that says, I hold myself accountable to this new habit in order to kick my paradigm into touch. And then you sign a new date. All right. And by signing and dating and holding yourself to account, you are more likely to do it. So this exercise here, you can use for every new habit that you want to change. But like I said, only focus on one, maybe two at a time. And when you are doing it automatically, then you start on the next one. OK, um, I have put out a blog post a little while ago on my habit process. Um, I did an update at the weekend, which was about my yoga one as well. Um, but when you hold yourself to account and you write it down, you've made the intention that when you notice your bad habit, you will do this instead. And because you've made the intention to do it, you are more likely to do it. OK, second part of your homework is to write to me or in the chat on my group or in the comments on wherever you're watching this video of what habit you are working on so that the community that I'm trying to build or that I am building can help you and hold you accountable to that habit. Because you can hold yourself to account, but we all give ourselves a free pass. So if you've got somebody else holding you to account, and I'll go into accountability tomorrow in more detail, but having someone else to hold you to account is much more powerful. All right. And then third part of your homework, just review Monday's questions ready for tomorrow's session. All right. Like I said yesterday, looking at them 
might trigger something new. You might have written yesterday that you want to earn 10 grand a month. And today, following this, and with all the extra stuff that you are studying, you might turn around and go, nah, I can earn £15,000 a month. So write that instead. It's your goal. It's not too big. It's not too small. Something for you. And we'll go into how to use that want list tomorrow to create a goal, to create your motivation, which will then link back and give you ideas on which habits to change. All right. So again, thank you for joining me this evening or on the replay. So let's have a look for any questions. So, ha, thank you for putting that into the chat. So one of our live attendees says, I won't use names because it's just, yeah. Um, can I have some more information on the planetuding approach? So most definitely. Um, there is a video sequence that I did in September, I think it was explaining the the planetuding approach so i will put that in the email as well um, as well as the link to the website um, for where you can get the journals um, for purchase and i will also send you an electronic copy of the journal with the email that i send to everyone who is registered whether they're on the lives or not and then there is a second question just popped up how do i know i am making a committed decision it's all due to down to your intuition, okay? It will just feel right. It might be causing the butterflies in your tummy, which can be equated to fear, but you will know if those butterflies are negative or positive. So for me, I get butterflies all the time. <laughs> but I have learned that sometimes they're good butterflies, something good's about to happen, and sometimes they are... Mm, maybe we shouldn't be doing this this doesn't feel right kind of butterflies so you tune into your intuition like i covered on day one in the um higher faculties bit focus on your intuition and see what that's telling you if it doesn't feel right don't make the decision go with what your gut says it's your intuition okay um your paradigm is the one that's causing the fear because if you're trying to make a decision to do something out of character for you, um, so change a habit that you've always had, your paradigm is going to fight back because it wants you to stay where you are. It wants you to stay stuck because that's safe. It's known. It's predictable. But you don't want to be stuck. You want to keep growing. And your paradigm is just going to have to deal with it. And it will fight you. It really will. But you'll get there. You really, you, you will get there. Just keep going over and over and you will get there. Just listen to your intuition and follow your gut. Any other questions? People are shaking their heads. <laughs> Thank you for that. Somebody's like, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well, if that is it tonight, if you do have any further questions, all my contact details are on the screen. Like I said, if you are signed up to the... Um, to this Zoom call, whether you're here live or not, um, you will receive an email shortly. Um, apologies that yesterday's one was a bit late. I had a bit of a computer fart just after the thing. Um, but tonight's will be on time. Tonight's will be tonight. And if you are watching this on the replay, if you do have any questions or you want any of the stuff I've mentioned, just get in touch. Any of my social media or by my email or even schedule a 30 minute discovery call with me, one to one, where we can discuss any of this but specifically on you okay i hope you have a lovely rest of your morning evening night wherever you are and thank you again for being with me have a good one bye